watching your screen or just the pen. You are watching the phenomenal JJS. I love that intro actually. Like, so we are going to be real. If you have not seen my scary text messages, I wouldn't say watch them. They weren't too awesome. Yeah, I'm recording. They weren't too great. It was just a. I thought the video was pretty nice. But y'all will have a different opinion than me. But we are going to watch it. And this, there might be multiple in this video. I want to see this right down here. 229. I like my video to be at least 10 minutes long. So. So yeah. This is supposed to be a true story. Let me down in the comments know if you think that these are true or not. I have only watched like 20 seconds of this video. So let's get into it. My visual playmate. That sounds very great. When I was eight years old, I didn't have any friends. My mom wouldn't allow me to play outside with the other kids in our neighborhood. Oh, that's sad. I was always alone. Mm -hmm. The only playmates I had were my cousins and my brother. But it took three hours and 25 minutes to get to their houses. One day, my mom let me play outside with the kids in our neighborhood for the first time because she was going somewhere, maybe to work or to run errands. Oh, I got weird. my dolls and other toys and was excited to play with the kids outside. When I got there, no one wanted to play with me. The attempt was useless, but then someone approached me. Stop it. He had puppy eyes and was cute. We quickly became playmates. Even though he was a boy, he would join me for tea parties with my dog. Oh, that's sweet. He also invited except me to play with him at his house. Yeah, that's sweet. That's nice. Except for uh, this kid's a ghost, I think. I think that he's some sort of... So, I'm going to just set down the moral right here. Always ask another kid to play with you. Like, you never know. They could be, like, real lonely. They could be, like... They could be, like, real sad. So just go ask them to play if you're a kid. Or if you're an adult, just go just say, hey, you want to be here? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how adults make friends. So so that's that's our moral right now. Let's continue. I'm, I'm just kind of ruining the scary moment. I was confused because his house looked old and abandoned. Like it hadn't been cleaned up for almost 12 years. We decided to go play in his garden. When we got there... I puked. I didn't know why at the time, but for some reason, I was yes, disgusted. I he didn't offer me water or anything. He just looked at me grinning and said, next time, you're going to sleep here too. Two weeks after that upsetting experience, I went looking for him. A paper airplane flew to me out of nowhere. I picked it up and when I opened it, I was shocked, scared, and sad. It was a newspaper clipping. The boy that I played with went missing nine years ago. I told you! I ran to my bedroom and I saw a shadow through my window. I looked at it closely and it was the boy. He was smiling. Today, I'm 19 years old and I still remember that part of my childhood so clearly. Wait, this this had a director? Are you kidding me? Well, okay, so that that, uh, that is creepy. Like, let me know in the comments. Do you believe in ghosts? I am a little bit of a I'm a believer. I've I've talked. I I've I've heard voices before. Like, I might be crazy and stuff. Call me what you want. I don't really care. But we're just going to... We're just going to do another one. Now, let me know in the comments. Do you think that's true or not? Okay, I'm on another one. So, apparently... I don't know. This is supposed to be true. It's supposed to be a creepy stalker. Okay. We're just going to hop into it. I know you all don't... You don't like me talking. You came for the scary stuff. My name is Victor, and I'm 23 years old. 23 years old. I have a story that happened to me 
when I was 17 years old. 17, so I worked as a carpenter years. at a local building company, and this happened at the period when I was a trainee for the same company. We were renovating a very old... So, apparently, he had a bad experience with the company is still with it. So, if I have a bad experience, like a scary, I'm not talking like just some idiot. I'm talking some, like, paranormal stuff happening. I'm quitting my job. I don't care if it's, like, construction, and I won't ever be there again. I'm quitting my job. <laughs> apartment building from around the 1960s that was going to be school classrooms for a school that had bought the building. As many carpenters, we were working on Friday, which basically means that we started earlier the rest of the week, so we could go home early on Fridays, which means it was a lot of very early mornings. So, one day, I was on my way to work at about 4.30 in the morning, and was walking the usual way to my bus. It was about one kilometer. It was through the block I was living on, and then through a small path in the forest, about 200 meters. Sorry. By this time in the morning, it was still pitch black, because it was winter and I live in Sweden. So the path through the forest was like a black hole. So I grabbed my phone and put the flashlight on, okay, an old fun. iPhone 4S by the way, and began walking the small path. About halfway on the path, I heard a crackling noise from my right, and flashed my light in the direction and saw nothing. I just figured it was an animal or something. The end of the path I heard their crackling noise again, but this time it was much closer. I had always been a little paranoid in the dark, but was trying to get over it. But I began walking a little mm -hmm. faster anyway, keeping yeah. an eye behind me the whole time. Yeah, I do. When that. I arrived at the bus station, I sat down, waiting for the bus, and was saying to myself that I was a coward for being so paranoid about a small sound I heard. Yeah, no, no matter who you are, you might get a little bit scared with that stuff, like, just so okay, man, I got you, hug, like, a little weird hug, okay, so I got you, like, you're always gonna be scared of something, you're not a coward for being scared. Okay. I could see the forest I walked through from the bus station, because it was only about 50 meters from the station, that glitch, but and when I looked at the path, I saw a man standing behind a tree, right under a street light, about Run. 10 meters to the right of the path, and he was clearly- That is creepy. So. Be ...watching me. He was wearing black pants and an old light blue, almost pastel colored jacket, like it was from the 80s. I felt a bit sick when I realized he was watching me even though it was only for about 20 seconds before I saw the bus arriving from around the corner. I immediately felt relief when I saw the bus. So I stepped on the bus and it was as usual, completely empty. I sat at the back of the bus and looked back at the forest to see if the man was still there, but he wasn't. When the bus began to take off, I heard a thud right beside my window. I quickly looked at the side and saw an arm reaching up to my window, waving at me. And the arm was wearing a Hi. light blue jacket. I didn't have time to see his face because he was wearing a hood and the bus had already taken off. On the way down to downtown, I tried not to think about the man, but it was so hard because it was so weird and something like that had never oh happened to me before. God. I eventually... Yeah, like, I feel like he's going to arrive at the bus station, and the guy's going to be there somehow. Somehow he's going to be right there. He got off the bus at my bus stop and began walking to the building where I had my working clothes and my gear. It was really close to my bus stop, so it only took me maybe about five minutes to walk there. When I arrived at the door to the building, I grabbed my key and was about to put it in the keyhole. When I saw in the corner of my eye... Peeking out from the building's corner, that man in the light blue jacket standing, Go away. looking at me. I quickly unlocked the door, ran inside, locked it behind me. After that, it was two more doors. Both needed an access card, so nobody without the card could get inside. He had the card After the first door, it was a long hallway. To the left, only lit up. 
You never, never feel safe in the dark with a long hallway, especially with no one there. Never feel safe. Always be aware. I'm paranoid, Arna. Shut up. By a few lights on the roof, in a ring in front of you, it was the second door that led to my locker in the coffee room. I ran as fast as I could. Run. I was shaking at this time. There was no way I could think of how he could have got down here so fast. I put on some coffee and changed to my working clothes. It was completely quiet in the room. It felt like hours before my co-workers showed up. When they finally showed up, I felt the best feeling in a long time. When it was time to get started with working, we began walking towards the elevator that led up to the top floor, which we were currently working on. When we arrived at the top floor, I realized I forgot my helmet in the locker. So I took the elevator down, went through the two doors, and got my helmet, and was making my way back up to the others. Don't do it. When I had opened the first door and was standing in the dark hallway, I froze. I heard someone whispering my name from the back of the hallway. I looked down the hallway and saw the same man, the same light blue jacket. Can I just say this to you? Go away, man. He said something I will never forget. You look so peaceful when you sleep, Victor. He said in a Get a gun and kill this guy. I gotta keep on looking out the window now. I am such a wuss. A shaking voice. I felt my whole world shatter when he said that. Then I ran for it. I opened the door and slammed it behind me. I ran to the elevator and smashed the button to the top floor. It felt like I was going 100 floors before I got to the top. I ran to the others and told them what happened. There. They just laughed. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're crazy, man. You totally weren't about to die. That guy's not. That guy's not a second. He, he, he's Jerry. He's our new guy. Yeah, stay out of Jerry. <laughs> Silly. Uh, Seeing that nobody can get in there without a card. Bet. I planned to call the police, but I didn't for some reason. Probably because Judgment. I didn't want to look like a coward in front of the others. Eventually, I never saw that man again. Thank God. I don't know if I was hallucinating or he was really there. I have no idea. But I never walked the same path to my bus again. And I always sleep with my curtains down. Even to this day. Oh god. These are kind of creepy. Like, these are, like, animations are so much more creepier than uh, texts and stuff. Let's see, what is our time on the recording? 13 minutes. 13 minutes. Uh, y'all probably want to see more, don't you? Now, I heard about this one being kind of pretty good. So, we are going to check it out. I need to get this blanket off of me. It's a, it's a freaking April. It's hot. Blech. I'm going to shake up my hair a bit. I got this, so, um, this one's supposed to be pretty good. So uh, it's called Francis. Yep. I'll get my face small for you. Looks creepy, but I don't really. Uh, oh, what the mic? When I was a kid in the suburbs of Chicago. Adventure meant Quetico Provincial Park, up on the border of Minnesota and Canada. The name implies the place was small, but Quetico is a million-acre nature preserve. So big you could go days and days without seeing another soul. We would go on camping trips up there, weeks of canoeing and portaging, seeing bears and moose and deer, sleeping under star-soaked sky. So I take it that you just experienced a childhood trauma there, including a freaking monster. Or a stalker, or a ghost boy.
The park was isolated and so pristine, you could actually drink the water straight from the lakes. Oh. But I won't be going back. I don't want to go anytime soon. Straight from. Not after what happened to a girl named Francis Brandywine. Oh, Francis. Hi there, Francis. Francis was 17 at the time. Black haired and with a reckless nature. Determined always to leave the well trod path, to break new ground and be alone. Uh, Eight that's years ago, great. Francis was up in Quetico with her family. They were in a remote part of the park, camped on the shore of one of the deeper lakes. A lonely body of water carved millions of years ago by a passing glacier. That's great. Huh. Of this lake <laughs> was rumored to be about 300 feet. Uh, I got chills already. One night after her family went to bed, Francis took the rowboat out. Planning to find a quiet spot in the middle of the lake. Lay on the bench of the boat, look up at the sky, and maybe write in her journal. So she left the shore. You're kind of loud. For about 20 minutes. And when she felt satisfied that she was over the lake's deepest spot. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that a stalker cannot walk on water unless that stalker is Jesus. So. Okay. And she lay down on the bench and looked up at the night sky. Stars eh, that's nice. Bright, and the Aurora Borealis Stop smoking. Like a neon lasso. Did you she just flew? Very peaceful. Pollution! She heard something strange. Hold the phone. I am holding the phone. What am I talking about? And the Aurora Borealis the, watch the cigarette. It's right there. Lasso. Watch the cigarette in her right hand. She was feeling very or, I mean, peaceful. left. See, pollution! Strange. Like no wonder you're probably about to get killed. You just polluted. Look at that, kids. She sat up, guessing that the boat had drifted to shore and run aground. But she looked around the boat, and she was still a half a mile from shore. She leaned over the side to see if she'd hit anything. But she saw nothing. No log. No rocks. She lay back down. Mm, I don't really like She this. told herself it could be any number of things. A fish, a turtle... A stick that had drifted under the boat. Of course it is. She relaxed again and soon fell into a contented reverie. She had just closed her eyes when she heard another knock. This time it was louder, a crisp. Like the sound of someone knocking hard on a wooden door. Except this knocking was coming from the bottom of the boat. That's not now right. She was scared. I'd be scared she too. Over the side again. It had to be an animal. What kind of animal would knock like that? Three quick, loud knocks in rapid succession. I heard Bigfoots do that. Her mouth went dry. She held onto each side of the boat. And now she could only wait to see if it happened again. The silence stretched out. Yeah. So this girl must survive. Or this... Dude. This girl must have survived because somehow this dude knows about it. So she must survive. It's, it's gonna be okay. What up? A few minutes passed, and just as she began to think she'd imagined it all, the knocks came again, but this time louder. You didn't imagine it, girl. She had to leave. She lunged for the oars. She Did you just put your again. lantern in the water? Pollution! The water was very calm, so she should have made quick progress. Pollution! But after rowing feverishly, she looked around, and she realized she wasn't moving at all. Something was keeping her exactly where she was. She Again, she tried rowing. She rowed and rowed on the verge of tears, but she went nowhere. She stopped. She was exhausted. Her heavy breathing filled the air. She cried. She sobbed. But soon she calmed herself again, and the boat was silent again for ten minutes. And I did not. Again, she tricked herself into thinking she'd imagined it all. But just like before, just when she was beginning to get a grip on herself, the knocking came again, this time as loud as a bass drum. The floorboards of the boat shook with each knock. Now she was so shaken, she started making questionable decisions. The first was to lower one of the oars into the black water, trying to feel if there was some land mass, even some creature she could touch. As soon as the oar broke the water's surface, though, she felt a strong, silent tug at the other end, and the oar was pulled under. She screamed. She jumped back. And now she had no options. This is why you don't pollute. 
All she could do was sit and hope and wait. Wait for the morning to come. Wait for whatever was going to happen to happen. The knocking went on through the night. She passed the time writing in her notebook. And it's only because of this notebook that we know what happened that night. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Can't tell us. She was never seen again. The boat was found on shore the next day, empty but for the journal. Mm. All those pages were her frantic jottings, all written in her distinctive handwriting, all but the last page. When the journal was found, that page was still wet, and on it were four words, looking as if they'd been written quickly with a muddy finger. They said, I did knock first. Yeah, so there's a monster in the water that can write everyone. So, oh, that's creepy. I got chills, though. I got chills. A short story. Are we sure? Okay, so. Okay, that's a good video. So, hope y'all enjoyed. Don't forget, down in the comments, please, 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 let me know. Do you think that these are real or fake? And which ones are real, which ones are fake? Did you get scared? I just want to know. Like, those animations, they kind of freak me out a bit. So that text message one, that didn't really scare me. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, that's where we're going to wrap off the video. Wrap up the video. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. You've been watching the great, the phenomenal JJS. We'll see you. Bye.